in us. You are with us. You are in this place. You are the spirit of God in the earth realm. So I thank you right now, Lord God. You've already started moving, God. It took the Holy Ghost to make us get up out the bed and, and, and order our footsteps into the house of the Lord. We didn't do that on our own. God did that this morning. So God got something for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Make a demand on the anointing this morning. Amen. Come on. The Bible says that it's the burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. It's some people right here right now who brought some yokes in. Well, you don't even know you're yoked up. But the power of God is here this morning to, to, to break every yoke that's been hindering you. You won't leave out the same way that you came in. It's not by coincidence or accident you're here this morning. You're in the right place at the right time and you're doing the right thing. And God's got some good things for you. He's a good God. He gives good gifts. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up right before him. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for preparing our hearts to hear, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive. Come on, I receive what you have for me. I receive everything you have for me, God. God, you're not finished yet. Hey, you're just starting, as a matter of fact. You're just starting this thing. Because the Bible says, he that began a good work. Hey, I know there's some good work going on up in here this morning in the name of Jesus. He will continue. That means if it's good, it's going to get better. Hey! Hallelujah! Because he reigns. Hallelujah! So we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. The eyes of our understanding. Continually being enlightened. In the name of Jesus. We lift up the shepherd of this house, oh God. Oh God, I thank you. You continue to cover and keep. We lift up our covering, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up her family on today, God. We thank you perfect everything that concerns her and perfect everything that concerns us. Now, God, every leader that you planted in this house, we ask that you restore, just like you give it to the pastor. Restore, he says, restoration you, some 30, some 60, and 100. But we thank you for the hundredfold restoration for everything that's given up to the body of Christ. Spiritually, physically, and financially. That's why God won't be concerned about our money. That's a word for somebody. You think that your money funny? It's funny, but I promise you, everything about to change. Because the Bible says what we see is temporal, but what we don't see is eternal. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father God, we follow short anyway, form of fashion, thought, word, and deed, omission, commission, knowingly, unknowingly, anything that didn't bring you glory. Even when we walked in this church, we may have done something that did not bring you glory. We ask for your forgiveness right now, just now, in the name of Jesus. Here's the key, and we receive your forgiveness right now, in the name of Jesus. When you look at us, you see nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see your righteousness in us through by Christ Jesus. So, Father God, we think you were hidden with Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost. Ooh, I'm sealed. You're sealed this morning. Come on. We reverse every curse, cancel every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that the word would have free course in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for our ministry of spirits called angels on assignment that are here to minister with the work of God. Angels are here this morning. Thank you, God. So, Lord, we be careful to give you all the praise. We be careful to give you all the glory. We'll be careful to give you all the honor. We sit up with the blood of Jesus. And we say it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a hand for the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I just say that the Lord is so glad to see everybody that's in the house, every ministry gift up in here, amen? We thank God for your labor, for your labor's not in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. God is drawn from the youngest to the oldest in the name of Jesus. And the Lord, let me just tell you something. Amen. We even thank our brother Josh, who the Lord ordered him to be this morning, amen? amen. Come on, it's many gifts. The Bible says, Amen. Many gifts for Joseph, yes. but it's one body. Oh, yes. God, I need all these gifts. My praise and worship sister, she's sitting right there. 
Amen. God needs all these gifts in operation. He didn't give us gifts to sit on them. He gave us gifts to glorify Him. Amen. Everybody in here has got at least one gift that you can give to the Lord. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you for Everybody, Brother Joseph. And some of you got many. Because you know how you got more? It's called multiplication. Exponential. I like that. Exponential multiplication. You know what that is? That's multiplication on steroids. God doesn't operate at four times four, bro, King. But he say four times four times four times four. That's exponential. Where my little math scholars up in here. Yeah, God got something for you too. Amen. We're going to be talking about dreams. You're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Just a little bit. I can just give you a little bit. I can't give you much. But I can give you much to give you a little working knowledge. You know, you can't you can't just have a preacher don't have to teach mama. See, that's what, a, what that's the issue between the difference between the kingdom and the church of God. Well, now you might okay, you moving that one right there because you know, all right. Welcome to the service this morning, y'all. Y'all already in the midst of it, amen. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord talking to you this morning just like he's talking to us. Hey, Hill. Amen. That's all I got to say is call the Lord calling the name. I'm not calling it. The Lord calling the name. We want to talk about dreams this morning. And it gets to the Holy Spirit. Because we're not just supposed to come to church, get baptized, and then go sit down. No, 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 no. I don't see that in my Bible working. Once they got baptized, they got filled. They went to work. Come on, they went to work. Come to get Satan kingdom. Hallelujah. Power. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm talking about that power. Power to cast out devils. Come on, power with anything poisonous. It can't harm you, brother Joseph. I got so much power on this side. <laughs> The same bite that came to kill me they ended up killing the person who tried to put the bite on me. I'm talking about power. Power. So let's just talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Real quick, real quick. Now I guess of the Holy Spirit. Now I guess. Now if you're sitting in the church right now for a year, I'm going to say 30, 40 years. Let's, let's bring it all the way down. And you've never heard anything about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to direct you to where you need to be. If you've been sitting 10 years in the church and you've never heard anything about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord direct you where you need to be. Hey. If you've been sitting in the church one year and nobody's ever brought up anything about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or if you've never seen it in operation or in action, Amen. ask the Lord, lead me where I need to go. See, because we have a supernatural Father. Amen. He's the creator of the universe, my sister. He's a supernatural God. And a supernatural God does supernatural things. This Bible is filled with the supernatural. From the beginning page to the end. Now the church is supposed to be walking in his power. Maybe you just don't, your faith level needs to be raised up. That's it. To just walk in there and go to that child and say, I know what the doctor said about you. But in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son hey. and in the name of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to anoint this oil. Then I'm going to take this oil. I'm going to anoint you with the oil. And I'm going to lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, will not only heal the sick, but the Lord is going to raise them up. Not, not You don't know about this pal? See that I, music mess with me. He got to stop. I'm telling you, y'all don't know how much music mess with me all the time. Not so all the time. All the time. I'm riding in the car. My sister, she playing all that R&B. I just be singing all day with a ride in the car. Sunday morning, I have no voice. <laughs> but see, that's how God is. He wants us to enjoy ourselves and have fun. He does. God gave us love, music for love. Amen. Amen. Yes, he did. Yes, he, did. he gave us love music, right here. Yeah, he liked all that. Balance. That Donna Dita, that Zonico type of thing. That's that's for Keith right there. Yeah, uh -huh. 
That's him right there. He likes all of that. See, you know about all this going on in the body of Christ. You're like, wow. I think I want to come to church more often, right? But often we don't see how people live a life that's free. We don't see that in the church. Come on, we see people all looking at this and looking at that and looking at the other. And if you walk out here and jump in front of them and I don't want to give a business name. Somebody said, watch out. I already, they already know where I'm going. They'll cuss you out like, still with all that church stuff on. I'm trying to tell you, don't pay attention to the people. Don't let people mess you up because they sit up in a, and I'm not talking about any, but I'm just trying to say you. So many people have led the people astray the wrong way. But the Bible says God has a remnant that he's raising up. People who move strictly by the Spirit of God. They won't compromise telling you what God said. No, you're wrong in that situation. That's wrong. That's not what the word. And they're just going to tell you what the word says about it. Now, if you don't want to believe the truth, I can give you some scriptures to show you God will send you lying spirits if you don't want to see. 1 Chronicles 18, 22. We don't have time to go to all the scriptures, but can you put up for me? Because we're talking about dreams. But we got to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when Paul was running to the church in Corinth, let me tell y'all about something. I, people act so brand new over old stuff. This stuff is thousands of years old. And people act like they have never done nothing before in their life. Come on, somebody. Yes, now, Corinth, when he wrote about the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the church in Corinth, Corinth, you think, you know, they say, and, uh, uh, look how they put it, um, what happened in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yes, and I'm about to talk about it. Vegas didn't have nothing on Corinth. Let me tell you something. A, a very simple city. Amen. And so, you know, Corinth was a thing. They have social media, surely. They didn't even have telephones. But everybody knew when you went to Corinth, they had a term called, we're going to Corinthianize. That meant we're going to commit sexual immorality. We're going to get drunk and we're going to turn up. So when you see, it was situated on the hill so you could see the light. So the closer you got, the flesh started jumping. So that flesh started jumping. Because you know when you get up that boat, they had prostitutes to service you. They had idol gods named Diane and Apollo. They had prostitute temples and the prostitute. That was part of their worship service. See, some people, you involved with people that sexual immorality is a part of their worship service. He was talking about sexual, he was talking about, because see, sexual immorality was running wild in the church in Corbin. Sexual immorality. And as it was back then. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Sexual immorality. See, who take about the devil? He don't have nothing new. He's a great pretender. He's an imitator. He's a counterfeiter. He's no good. He's a heartbreaker. He's a liar. He's a cheat. Oh, wait, that, was Rita, that was Rita Franklin right there. Huh? Okay, I don't know. But it's the same thing. <laughs> He's a part of our lives. It's nothing good in him, darling. Sister Donald, it's nothing good in him. Nothing good. So when he was running to this church, I mean, they flowing in the gifts. They got the gifts. See, that's why you got to know the gift of discerning the spirit. Because the devil can imitate what God does. He can imitate what God does. The psychic, the witch, the warlord, the one nine hundred number, whatever you call it, to get a, to give me, give you, give you a word about something. They're operating with a dark knowledge. But see, the prophet's a true prophet of God. See, the standing office of a prophet, you can't just say I'm prophet watermelon. No. To stand in the office of the prophet, I'm talking about the five-fold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. To stand in the office of prophet, you've got to have the gift of prophecy, which is supernatural utterance in an unknown, in a known tongue. Yeah, like they'll say, thus said the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you this. And then you've got to have the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, or the gift of discernment. You got to have a discernment. You got to have at least two of the revelation gifts. Come on, Holy Spirit. You got gifts. Now, three gifts. Three gifts. Three gifts reveal something. They call it revelation gifts. The gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of discerning the spirits. Then you got three. That's the power gifts. They do something. The gift of faith. The gift of the working of miracles and the gifts of healings. And then you got three gifts that say something of the utterance of vocal gifts. They're called prophecy. Dollars kind of tongues. And interpretation of tongues. Now, if you've never heard any of this and you've been sitting in the church for five years, I 
Ask the Lord to direct you where you need to go. Come on, teach. You better preach God. Ask him to direct you. He gave us this to give us our knowledge and power and revelation over the enemy. See, we got something that other folks don't have. Now, what good is you to have something? Just like having a car. A brand new car that's got all these gadgets and all this stuff. You don't know how to use it. What good is it? What good is it? We got the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And we don't even know how to use them. Opera, keep, you can be operating in gifts and don't even know you're operating in it. Yeah. 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 That's good right there. So, God told Paul he was about to leave Corinth. One thing about Paul, let me tell you what he did. Saul Paul. He would establish the church and he would move on and go to the next location. And so if an issue arose in the church, they would come find Paul. Uh -huh. Paul, this is what's going on. Sexual immorality going on in the church. The people uh, using gifts, they call themselves prophesying. And they prophesying and they're saying, to go to 1 Corinthians for me, 13, uh, 12 and 1. Put it on there for me, please. So they were operating. And they were getting up and prophesying in the church. And they get to the point where they say, oh, Jesus is cursed. Now that's why he wants you to notice. He says, not about the gifts of the the gifts of the spirit. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. What the word in my Bible says, ignorant. See, that's a nice way of dressing it up. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. Go to the next verse. He says, You know that when you were pagans, in other words, you weren't following God, somehow or the other you were influenced and led astray by these false gods that can't speak. They can't talk to you. As a matter of fact, our God is a God that's not made by hands. But they have to take these gods and make stone and out of wood. That's not our God. Keep going. This is somebody in here. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. So they were getting up and prophesying in the church. Da -da 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 -da. Jesus be cursed. Time out. Uh, hold up. But see what happens since Marquis? They think because they got a little piece of something and they looks like they're flowing a little some Marquis that they tell them the truth. But the devil is a liar. So Paul wrote to them and said, no, no, no. Y'all flowing in a gift. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The world has what we have too. They just don't have with the spirit of truth. As a matter of fact, say truth is in me, truth surrounds me, and truth goes before me. That means the Holy Ghost won't witness to a lie. I don't care how much you try to be my friend and get me to come in agreement with your lie, I'm going to tell you like this. No. No, it's not God. No. You ask me, so I'm going to tell you. Well, can we make it simple in that? Jesus said in Matthew, if you don't know, come on, Jesus, see, God gets stuff simple. You don't have to go to Yale and Harlem and all. No. The wisdom of God is greater than the wisdom of man. Amen. That's it. So he says, well, if you don't want, if you don't know, just watch him. He said, you know the truth by the fruit. This is real simple. It's simple. What kind of fruit do they have? They lie all the time. Are they young old time? I know you need to hire people. You know you can't do all that by yourself, right? You do. You know you need more trucks, right? You, you can't do it all by yourself. Now, you may want to hire somebody because they family. That's your boy. But you know he always, he lying all the time. Delivering to the wrong places. I'm just giving an example. Uh, so he's getting his paycheck. You don't see him no more until his money run out. What you say, bro, kid? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh -huh. But you still want to try to put The tree doesn't tell you the fruit because trees can look like a lot of different things until they start to produce the fruit. Uh -huh. Then you know, oh, that's an orange tree. Uh -huh. That's it, man. Uh -huh. 
It's so simple. Why well, make stuff complicated? It's not complicated. If around, if, uh, it's nothing but j- just confusion around you all the time. Everywhere you go, disturbance and all that stuff. I know your fruit. I don't need to deal with you. Right. I'm not dealing with you. Because I see the fruit is telling me what the tree going to be. Uh-huh. Oh my God. But see, this gift called the gift of discerning the spirits, it only deals with one class of other spirits. Whether they be human, demonic, angelic, or godly. It only deals with the spirits. See, it sees beyond the natural eye. We get caught up on how stuff looks, says Brittany. Oh, they look so fine. <laughs> oh, they look so good. <laughs> oh, they know how to stroke me the right way. They know how to tell me just what I need to hear. Girl, you're looking so good today. Oh, my Lord, you smell so good. Oh, my God. Every time I come around you, you watch people always flatter you all the time. Hey, that's it. Oh, yeah. See, because that's how the devil come in with all that flattery. Giving you flowers and taking you out to eat all the time. What's at the end of that thing? See, look, the truth going to show up. Now, if it's a true man of God, a true man say, God, that's how to teach you to do, huh, God, <laughs> A true man of God, a true woman of God, is going to keep your integrity. That's it. Good. Good. I like that. You taking me all the time about me flowers and all this stuff and all this stuff, but at the end, you want me to, okay, I got to do something with this. Oh. <laughs> that was your intent all along. Oh. Oh.
but get the discerning. It's seeing beyond the natural. I don't know why, but I think that person, I'm supposed to be with that person. I don't know why. So when we talk about dreams, God will put you to sleep at night. Put up Job 33 for me. See, he's going to do supernatural things. Talk about you. You got to know how to discern what's of God and what's not of God. Everybody stay with the Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. All right. Put up Job 33 for me. Uh-huh. He says, but not I need to be there. Let me make sure I'm right. Let me make sure I'm right. Y'all know God moving quick, huh? It's a quick move. You better be ready. God moving quick. I'm going to tell you how I know now. I went to this lady's house. She said, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me give you something. This is saying. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I got the right scripture. Hang on. It is Job, but I guess it's other. He said, and she came out, she said, Here, God told me to give you this. Y'all ready? This is what it says. The time is now. Amen. This lady ran out and brought this to me, Brother Joseph. Can I blow your mind even more? Nook, nook, where are you? Nook, nook said, I got the same book. <laughs> Wednesday. They were like, they were like, she got the same book as you have. God means the time is now. He means that. It's now. We're in the now season. Why, why haven't I seen the breakthrough? And you know, you, I, I'm going to tell you why. You know why? I'm going to tell you why you haven't seen the breakthrough. It's not that the breakthrough is not going to happen. We got time. We got chronological time, my sister. You know that's day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. Children of Israel were in chronological time. Although God ain't prophesied, I'm going to release your people. They're going to be in bondage, but I'm going to release them. Over 400, depends on how you study. Some people say 400, some say 430, but we know 400 years, okay? That's for the people out there. But when that appointed time came, 400 years of chronological being slave, Sister Monkey, every day, being mistreated, being forgotten about it, calling out to God. Seemed like God wasn't answering no prayer. But they remembered the promise, but God said he was going to deliver us. He said he was going to set us free. He told Moses that. He told Abraham that. Here come Moses on the scene. But it, Moses had to be born before any of this stuff could happen. God, people got to be in position to be in place before some of your breakthroughs can get to you. Moses raised up. 40 years in Egypt. 40 years on the backside of the desert. Then God says, I want you to go now and go to, go to Pharaoh. Go to a man. I'm going to send you some help. Aaron will help you. But anyway, he performed all these miracles and everything. See, the same God back then is the same God that is now. The same miracle working problem of God. It's right now. But when at the point in time called Passover, we're talking about it right now. So I want y'all to get ready, get a lamb for every family. Don't put any leaven in bread. I'm about to break you out right now. Hey. To Pharaoh and them, it looked like they're going to be slaves all their lives. I'm talking to the Holy Ghost, talking to somebody. Because you've been in a low place. Amen. You've been left for dead. You've been thrown in a pit. All the things that could possibly happen. And it might not even be your fault. It wasn't your fault, as a matter of fact. Come on. But the devil used people. But when that four hundred, when it was time to let go, they went from chronological time and stepped into a Kairos moment. Because the time of Kairos means the appointed time, the breakthrough. So if you haven't seen, you're just in chronological right now. You're just it's in chronological. But I promise you, the time is now. You're about to step into a Kairos moment. A Kairos moment where the breakthrough happens. God moving so fast, I'm telling you, I can tell you testimony after testimony how God is doing something so supernatural. And you don't have to say a thing because when God comes down, comes down, He does all the time. You don't have to say one word. That's God right there. Oh, you're going to say, I know that's God right there. I know that's God right there. You're not going to say a word, Miss Devil. God doing all the talking now. He doing all the talking. Time. Remember now, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. It's been 20 years. It's just happening. But now, the Kairos moment about to come. Put up Job 33 for me. 
could be 20 years. It can't be 20 years right now. But Kairos is here. You about to step into some of the biggest breakthroughs you've ever seen in your life. Hallelujah. God just had to get people in position in their place before it could happen. See, because somebody got your name in their mouth. Somebody got my name in their mouth. And somebody's about to call your name. And your life's going to change forever. It'll never, ever be the same. Because somebody about to call my name. It's called favor. It's called promotion. It's called elevation. It's called all of the above. Because promotion does not come from the east or the west. But promotion comes from God. A supernatural God does supernatural things. Hallelujah. But when he puts you to sleep, let me give you this. We're going to wrap it up. Amen. Y'all ready to get your breakfast this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thought I wrote it down the right way. I may have written it down. Go, go. There you go. That chick is a Wednesday night chick back there. She is. See, she already has this teacher. She already has it. Look at this. He says, in a dream. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. In a vision of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds. Keep going. He may speak in their ears talking about God and terrify them with warnings. Mm -hmm. Keep going. To turn them, oh my God, from their wrongdoing and keep them from pride. I think that's it, huh, Sister Takara? Is that it? Okay, to preserve them from the pit, <laughs> their lives from perishing by the sword. God will come to you on your dream. Hey, and he will show you that person you think for you is not really for you. Hey. That person is jealous of you. And they want everything that you have. They're not really for you. As a matter of fact, they deal in that witchcraft stuff. And you won't hear anybody else unless the Lord put you to sleep and show you this. Can I give you one more? Just one more. Well, I, I want to tie it into how God said in the well in my in the last. This is for everybody. Because He said, "In the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh." Let me tell you, that's for everybody. He said, "Your young men should have visions." And your own men are going to dream. So that means if God starts dealing with you as a child, he's going to keep dealing with you until you check out of here. He's going to keep giving you dreams. Now, a vision is an open eye. You can say an open eye dream. Your eyes are open and you see something. That's a vision. See, that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've seen it to the realm of the Spirit. Why do I want to teach you like this? So you know somebody when they lie to you in your face. That's not a lie. The Holy Ghost said this. I want to use that word you like to use, but Joseph, I, I, you know, and I'm going to just keep it right there. <laughs> yes, Lord. But people know me know what the word is. They know. Amen. They lie to me too. Yes, Lord. Go, to, go to Genesis for me, 20 chapters. Now, I promise you, I'm wrapping that up right here. Genesis. So discern, divine do-over, mm -hmm. promise restoration. restoration. Mm -hmm. This is it. God will give you dreams of wanting. God will give you dreams who to marry. God will give you dreams where to live. God will give you dreams what job to take. God will give you dreams with a creative idea that you go from poverty to billionaire overnight. God is not limited. And he wants to do that with us, Stephanie. He wants to give you that idea as a child. That you can be a little millionaire before you even get the teenage status. Amen. Everybody ought to receive that. I'm trying to get out there and receive that. He'll give you witty inventions. Come on, go to Genesis. This is we're talking about this right now. We're talking about Abraham right now. I promise you this is it. The 20th chapter. I'm in the right place, Lucy. Okay. Alright. Uh-huh. Go to the third verse. Go to the third verse for me. We just have to stand chapter. I'm going to read what they're reading up there. I'm talking to you because, see, the Creator, He deals with you in dreams. Whether you're a believer or not, God still invades your dreams. I'm going to show you right here. And God will protect you. You don't even know God is talking to somebody on your behalf. 
in their dreams. But watch this. It says, but God came to Abimelech in a dream. One night he said to him, watch this. Abimelech is not necessarily a personal name, but it's the title describing the king. Just like Pharaoh is not the name of a person, it's the title of an Egyptian king. Just like Christ is not the name of Jesus, Christ is the title of describing his office, the anointed one. See, like no, right. So he came to Abimelech because just came and took Sarah. He liked her, he took her. You know people do that for Joseph? I like her, but she married. I'm not going to take her. I don't know, they're doing it right now. Sure is. Yeah. They're doing it right now. They, they, they get the eyes set on somebody else's father or whatever, and I'm going to take it. Yeah. But look what God told Abimelech. You are as good as dead. Because the woman you have taken is a married woman. You took that woman, that woman married. Keep going. He said, now, Bimelech had not gone near her, so he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Now, watch this. Abimelech was an ungodly king who did not serve God. But God invaded his dream to let him know, I'm kill you. Keep going. Did he not say to me, she my sister? See, Abraham lied and said, oh, she my sister. Yeah, he lied. Watch him lie, you tell him. Yeah? And did she say also, he is my brother? <laughs> Have I done this with a clear conscience? I only did this because they told me they were sisters and brothers. Keep going. Did God say to him in the dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. He said, so I kept you from sinning against me. Not sinning against Sarah. Because I know they lied to you. I will restrain you from touching that woman. He didn't say sinning against Abraham or Sarah. He said, you would have sinned against me if you had touched her. That is why I did not let you. Did y'all say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To Sarah 
what he said. And I'm giving you, look at this. I, and not only I'm giving you a thousand shekels of silver. This is going to cover any offense against you before all who you are with you. You are completely vindicated. You're completely vindicated. Come on. Then Abraham prayed to God. Come on in. And God healed Abimelech, his wife, his female slaves, so they could have children again. God has shut up the wounds of everything on Sarah's behalf. Before he delivered. It was a place that like nobody had no more babies anymore. He shut everything down on Sarah's and Abraham's behalf. Because Sarah had to produce the promised seed of Isaac. Couldn't nobody come in on that and mess that up. That was messing up the plan and purpose and destiny of God. But when the prophet prayed for her, everything opened up again. These are the miracle working power of God. How he will interrupt people's sleep on your behalf. And say, give her that position. Give her that position. And they just come here and say, you know what? You, you don't even have to fill out the paperwork. It's already done. You don't have to do that. But he's going to deal with your dreams. I can give you some scriptures. He gave creative ideas and dreams. He told Joseph to get, he told Joseph, Mary, you better marry Elizabeth in a dream. Marry her. I know she pregnant because he had plans of divorce her. I'm a divorcer. But God came to him in a dream. He said, you marry that woman. Marry her. See, God's going to deal with you in dreams. Because it's the realm of the supernatural. But you got to be able to discern. The supernatural realm has good and evil. I'm wrapping it up. So you have to be able to discern what's of God and what's not of God. And he gives that to you as children. You don't have to wait to get old to get this because it's supernatural. And if you're sitting under this today, a divine importation is taking place. Now what you have to do is you have to continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge. God has given us supernatural things that excels, excels us and accelerates us among the rest. Excel means you'll stand out above everybody else. Accelerate means it's not going to take you as long to get there or to accomplish it or to receive the position or to make a million dollars or to whatever it is. It's not going to take you that long to get there. Because we got something the world needs. Hallelujah. We're the salt of the earth. That means if we show up some flavor ought to come up in there some kind of way. Come on. Salt, if you don't have food and salt, you can't taste it. But when I show up on the scene, here come the flavor. I got the flavor with me called the Holy Ghost. A supernatural God, He does supernatural things. He's given us the gift called the Holy Spirit. He's given us nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray that God will stir up every gift on the inside of you in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now that you're going to walk in a revelation, level of revelation that you've never walked in before. You're going to walk in a level of wisdom that you've never walked in before. You're going to walk in a level of knowledge, and it's going to trump all the natural knowledge that man. They're going to look at you and like, how do you know those things? Well, I know the person who created it. Yeah. I can go directly past you. He tells me what you went to school to learn called natural knowledge. And he gives me supernatural knowledge. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural understanding. He's equipped us with that. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, these are your people. And I commend them to you. Thank you, God. The one who's able to keep them. The one who's able to bless them. And I thank you for, Lord God, giving them divine downloads at night. Showing them the image of who you have them to be. Not what man say, not what their family says. And we expect this in this season because it's a Kairos moment and the time is now. In Jesus' name. If you're not 
say you give your life to Jesus? If you're in a backslid condition, hallelujah, let me go back. You know God is talking to you right now. And the word is not bound. As a matter of fact, let's do it by faith. You know today is the, it's your day today. It's called the divine appointed time. So you're giving your heart to Jesus and we just want you to repeat after us, Lord, Lord I'm, sorry I'm sorry for my sin. For my sin. I, accept I accept you as my Lord and Savior. That you are the Son of God. That you came and died for me. And you rose for me. And I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. For those who just received the gift of salvation, we pray the Holy Spirit will lead you to a good church home where you'll be rooted and grounded and fed in the name of Jesus. If you're in a backslide condition, come forward. God is married to the backslider. Mm -hmm. If you would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit. The preacher is the agent. The Holy Spirit is the agent that baptizes you in the family of God. The preacher is the agent that baptizes you with water. But Jesus is the agent that baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. If you need that baptism, today is your day. Now is your time. You need that empowerment. You don't get any more of God. You got it all, but he certainly gets more of you. In the name of Jesus. If you'd like to become a part of the family here, the ministry of God, the doors of the church are now open. Hallelujah. If you would like for us to pray with you concerning anything in the word of God, we'd be glad to pray with you because there's power in agreement.
So, Father God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Christian Soap Paper Productions today at Bridgeside.com, Amazon, Target, Walmart, or any other book retailers. Copies are also available for download.